welcome uh, Kaushiki Chakrabarti. Uh, not only just welcoming from on behalf of Sarvakal Music Academy, but all the music lovers of the city of Calgary are welcoming you with, you so much. with heartfelt thanks. Thank because you so much. although I realize you have visited this city in the past, but that was when you were barely a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the first time you have come here to perform on behalf of Sir Bakal Music Academy. Yes. Koshiki, we would like to know how does your music journey continuing and when did it start? As you said, I came to uh, US and Canada and of course Calgary when I was barely a toddler. I, was, I think I was three, three and a half years old. So, uh, and I'm sure you would remember that I was also singing at that time. Yes. So I do not even have a conscious memory of when it exactly started. It must yes. have started from my mother's womb, thanks to my parents. Yes. It started from home and uh, it's still going on and in the journey I think uh, music and music lovers have enriched this life uh, whose purpose has always been music. So I strongly believe that, you know, um, this journey uh, with music has enriched and enhanced my life so much. Of course, learning music is one journey. Understanding right. music and the understanding the depth of the craft is one thing. Yes. And of course, the the acknowledgement, the love and the inspiration, the blessings that you get from all over the world is so, you know, it's so encouraging, it's so inspiring and yet it's so humbling at the same time. Yes. So I'm just, I think I'm overwhelmed uh, with the blessings of God that I've got in the form of music and in the form of all the audiences and music lovers who have loved me. Yes, I think that you are born with a tremendous, tremendous talent, a phenomenal asset, as they say, in any artistry. And to augment that, you also had excellent talim yes. right from your young age. So would you be able to tell us a little bit about your talim and who your gurus are, the prime ones? You know, my talim started from home. So uh, my grandparents, my uncle, and my mother, Chandana Chakravarti, um, you know, my primary basic elementary start uh, talim started with my mother uh, because Baba was very very busy at that time with his own career so then Ma was mostly at home and she was my best friend she still is mm -hmm. and she was my first teacher my first guru and then after a point when my parents and my grandparents figured out that you know music is there and in some form or the yes. other and I I loved music I never had a different hobby than music so I, I loved singing, I enjoyed singing, that was my pastime, that was you know, the thing that I connected with most spontaneously. So that is when Baba started you know, taking interest in what I would oh, yeah. like to do in music. Uh -huh. And then Baba took me to his guru, who is Guru Gan Prakash Khoshji. Hmm. And um, that's another blessing, that's another, yeah. you know, it's, it's learning from God himself. I mean, yeah. That learned, a musician, yeah. a guru, for whom I think, I mean, he has blessed and contributed so much in the field of music. Absolutely, yes. So being able to learn from him for a couple of years was a blessing in itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, I learned from uh, Guruji and then my talim continued with Baba. Mm -hmm. And then I got the uh, opportunity to learn Carnatic music from Dr. M. Balamurli Krishnaji. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, it's, it's such, as I said, I mean, it's, it's a blessed life. So I've got all the best of stalwarts and gurus and musicians all around me blessing me and sharing their music and their experience and their divinity with me. Yeah. So that's how uh, this journey started and, uh, in, and continued. And uh, my talim, my time with Baba has been an extremely stringent and strict process. He was very, very strict. He is still very strict. So no pampering as a father. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And I, I always say that that once a guru, you're a guru first, and then, then anything else. So that's yes. what happened with Baba. So, uh, our relationship started as a guru shisha, and that mm -hmm. continued, and that has always been the primary mode of relationship between us. And uh, you know, to start with, as a child, I used to think it's very strict, but now I. I thank that time because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to 
uh, you know, understand and realize what it takes to, to, to learn music, to understand music and to start a journey with music and to keep on, you know, Absolutely. You know ev refreshing that bonding yes. with music every day with your talim and riyas. Yeah. They say that uh, doing riyas of music is like a beautiful walk in the moonlight. <laughs> That's how the simile has been given. However, uh, with this kind of talim, and then you are also one of the finest torch bearers of Patiala Garada. So would, the, would you feel a little bit pressurized and do you feel a little bit tension that how am I going to further augment it and how am I going to take it further? <coughs> You know, I always say that because I get this question a lot. I so see. Do you, do, you, do you feel the pressure? I think when you don't love something too much, you feel the pressure more. True, very true. But when you love it, you want to do it more. So you are not doing it out of a pressure. You are doing it out of your own urge and wish to sing better, to have a better friendship with music. So that is how the, the relationship has always been. I never felt the pressure that I have to do good because I'm Baba's daughter because I practice, uh, you know, uh, Patiala style because I feel my talim has been in Patiala style because I follow the lineage of the legacy of, you know, who not, like the yes. best of best musicians. Yes. So this pressure would only uh, be felt if the love is not felt as much. But my love for music is such that it still feels like my passion, it still feels like, like my hobby rather than a profession. It just turned into my profession. But I think I'm more in love with music than anything else in life. So uh, the pressure never, uh, you know, it never overpowered. It was always less than the love that I felt for music. That's excellent, Koshiki, because in Canada we say there is nothing like work when you love something. Oh, yeah. So work stops being work when yes. it is love. Yes. That's wonderful. When we were talking about this garana, do you still believe in the concept of Grana tradition because today with the international communication being so vibrant the, the limits of Grana are becoming diffused mm -hmm. so would you consider yourself to be yes Patiala Garana but taking some beauties from Kirana Garana, Jaipur Atroli Garana and all other Garanas? I think I would like to uh, uh, add certain things to this concept of Gharana. I think Gharana still exists, but the definitions have changed. I see. Because the core concept of a Gharana still exists. Mm. You know, the basic the styles, style, the basic yeah. strength of a Gharana, they mm. still are very, very much embedded in our Talim. Mm. So you can never outgrow them. What you do is, once you have learned and once you've got an idea of the basic core concept and essence of that karana and then you start getting influenced by other styles of right. music and then you expand. Right. <coughs> you never uproot. I would rather mm. say that you don't uproot and go right. somewhere else but I would say that being rooted in your karana, you expand yourself right. and more rooted you are, more you can expand. True. Very you true. can have your essence, you can have your roots settled where they yeah. should be but then you can expand, you can assimilate yeah. other styles and make it a more colourful, brighter style yeah. of music depending on what your preferences are. You gave a beautiful simile of a vruksha actually. Oh yeah, exactly. The stronger and deeper <coughs> the roots are, the better, healthier and bigger are the branches. Yeah, yeah. and is, in any yeah. way in our craft we are supposed to be broader and bigger than we right. are. Yes. So you know if your gharana gives you that much of nutrition from the roots yes. that you can expand to your roots. I like that. Yes. I, think, I think that takes yes. you to a brighter and bigger space of music. Correct. Right. Right. Now you have performed in the US, in Canada many 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 times. <laughs> I've heard it, I have read it, I have, I have known it. Um, see in our music, Sur, Sahitya and Laikari, these are the three primary foundation. However, performing in front of the audiences which are not Indian, um, so Laikari most of the people know, they understand and enjoy rhythm. Sur, yes, that too. But when it comes to Sahitya, when you're presenting different bandishes, how does that fit into your definition of presenting Raga or Raga Rendiri? In, 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 uh, in countries yeah. uh, where they don't where follow they, your language? That's know? right. Okay. I think, uh, you know, 
Sur and Laikari, they have their own ways to communicate. And your Sur and the uh, dynamics of that Sur mm. and the enunciation of that Sur mm. depends on the lyrics, which is the Sahiti. Mm. So if it's a song of pathos, mm. or as opposed to if it's a song of celebration, mm. how you project your voice, how you mm. control your dynamics, they are very different. Mm. So even though people in Western countries, if they don't follow the Sahitya, they follow the emotion that is rendered mm. according to the Sahitya. Yeah. So if it's a song of pathos, which is an universal feeling, yeah. if it's a song of happiness or love or, or uh, longing or you know festivities, yeah. these are feelings that are universal. Right. Oh, I so see. if yeah. your Sur and your Laikari communicates the lyrics in accordance to the yeah. mood of the lyric, and even even for the people who don't follow the exact sahitya of mm -hmm. of the song, if your sur and lekari are in accordance to the sahitya, they would follow the dynamics of the sur, and that is how they will communicate with the emotions. Oh, I see. So <coughs> touching the hearts of even those who have not yes. understood the words of the bandish, yeah. they can... understand the emotion mm -hmm. that is beyond yeah. the words yeah. of the bandish. Yeah. So the rasa is achieved yes. in spite of that exactly. okay. through the sur. Right. Now again, from Canadian point of view, and I'm sure the American and all other countries point of view, I want to ask you that we would like to, and Sarvakal Music Academy is one of the primary ones, we want to propagate this music, Hindustani vocal music especially, but all kinds of music in the Western world, both uh, as connoisseurs among the older and as students among the younger ones. So any ideas, any advice? You know, I always say this, for any craft to survive, what you need is, you need more and more youngsters mm. to be interested in that. Mm. Because, you know, uh, again, I'll give you an, an analogy of a tree. Mm. Because if you plant a seed today, you want your next generation to water it. Mm. That is how you can make sure that the tree will survive or the plant will survive and it will blossom. So I think it's very, very important at this juncture of time when, you know, our second generation uh, Indians are growing up in Western countries. Yes, yes. It is not easy for them right. because, you know, we understand sometimes the elders, when I speak to them, they say it's not, um, it's not very easy for us to deal with it. But what we sometimes fail to realize is that it's more difficult for the kids to balance between the two right. because they come home everyone else is speaking in some other language they have a different culture yeah. they listen to different kinds of music they wear different kinds of clothes they have you know puja room in the mm. house and everything yes. but when they are in their schools high schools colleges it's a very very different culture out there sure. so they have to balance between the two right. so i think for us the primary importance is to pass on our values to the next generation okay. and not overpower them and overwhelm them and force them to learn music mm. but to make music a part of their life mm. because you know for classical music we have this preconceived notion that we have to understand classical music to be able to appreciate it. Mm. I think coming from the younger generation I differ mm. because I think you well, anyway mm -hmm. appreciate it first and then mm. you would have the wish to understand it. Yeah. So don't force it to them that you have to learn yeah. so that you understand and yeah. then appreciate. Yeah. Don't do that. Just bring them to concerts, play them good yeah. music at home so that they get exposed to the sound of this music. Right. And music will do the rest. Right. Because you know the connection happens through music. True. So if they start liking our music, our right. traditional forms of music, right. Indian ways of singing and playing instruments, they would anyway feel more and more connected and eventually they would want to learn and they'll appreciate more. Right. But I'm also asking, as a professor of music going to various universities in both mm -hmm. Canada and the US, even the Western students are taking in tremendous interest very in this much music. Interest, yeah. And this music is very much sought after. Yes. And primarily because of its meditative quality. Right. And they also feel that we actually feel the Hindu philosophy the Indian philosophy very much embedded yeah. into this music. Kind of yes. And also, so. uh, it is meditative. I have no, you know, there are no yeah. two ways about it. But also I would like to mention 
that the range of this music is from being very very meditative to being very 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 excited so the entire range if you think about a performance from a vilambit to a very very drut composition it's like a life it's yeah, like how life it's like how life unfolds right. from a very way that this analogy has always been given by by, by my father saying that you know jaise <coughs> it's like how life unfolds it starts mm -hmm. from a very very calm and quiet mm -hmm. beginning of the process mm -hmm. and then it gets matured matured it assimilates more and more elements into it and then it flourishes and reaches the climax so it's like that mm -hmm. so this music has the power to connect and to cater all types of taste in music starting from a very very meditative side to a extreme exciting and uh, very scintillating very, very scintillating okay phase. good 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 so i think in this country uh, you uh, and everybody else who are you know training uh, students and you know uh, initiating them into the into the realm of classical music they are doing a great service and it is so much more important that people are aware of this music and how to understand and how to approach and how to appreciate and how to love this music wonderful that's absolutely wonderful are you koshiki are you a feminist i'm not uh, i am brother of i'm brother of equalist equalist okay oh that that actually answers my question because <laughs> once when i was teaching at the in nyu this was few years ago uh i uh, got the news that you are performing in carnegie hall yes. along with some female band yeah and a colleague of mine professor who was teaching ethnomusicology and myself we just sort of went there uh, for a few minutes we couldn't spend too much time and i saw, we saw all the female musicians including yeah. the tabla and the pakhavas yes. player and i was wondering and you were of course the lead and i was thinking okay one of these days i'm going to ask her and so here is my question so what was the purpose of having this female band or you know, sakhi band from, uh, yeah it's called sakhi last right. year was our performance in carnegie hall our first uh, yeah. us tour that was uh, and i feel extremely happy that you know i have been instrumental i have been made to make this yeah. happen Uh, but i think it's important that at this time and age we have a all female musical ensemble which sakhi is because uh, it's very relevant and it's very relevant in this time that we have uh, we have too many all male groups which we don't call all male groups but when it comes to female we call it all female, female group yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's like a musicians band and you know doctors musicians they are gender they're not gender specific they're true. beyond gender true. so i think this is a group which is very unique which has vocal instrumental percussion and dance all right. within the same yeah. umbrella and we've yeah. never had anything like that even in an all male group right. so this is something that uh, we all formed and we all had thought of this was my brain child and then everything Wonderful. started falling on this and i really think that this goes beyond classical music audience this is such a theatrical experience i'm sure that everybody who has been uh, an audience have enjoyed and everybody else would eventually koshiki we heartily heartily welcome you again and we are so happy that at our music academy sarvakal music I'm so academy i'm so thankful to sarvakal music academy yes, for putting you have everything come together. you have come here and we cannot wait to listen to your concert Thank we you just so cannot much. and on behalf of all of us all the music lovers connoisseurs and the academy of course we wish you a very long and beautiful journey of music thank, thank you so much i'm really humbled thank you so much